All right, let's look at this Gibson 1996 Earl Scruggs Classic Banjo. Uh, if you like these videos, go ahead and uh, uh, punch the, uh, or hit the subscribe button and you'll be getting these all the time. So uh, let's hear what this sounds like. <laughs> Sounds incredible. And now we'll just describe the banjo. So we look down at the pot, and the uh, main thing you'll see here is that uh, this uh, nickel looks incredible. It looks brand new. And uh, anyway, we'll look at that. I'll turn around, and you'll see. And uh, we spent about four hours tearing these banjos apart, correcting everything, adjusting it, shining the metal, and Believe you me, you can't do this at home because if you put this on a buffer that's too high speed with the wrong wheels, you'll just take all the nickel off the banjo, so you don't want to do that. Okay, let's look up the neck, and you're going to see bow tie inlays. And uh, So what happened? In 1949, Earl Scruggs sends his banjo back to Gibson for a new fretboard, and tradition was at that time they would put whatever they had in stock, and they're making bow ties in 1949. So what do they put on it but a bow tie fingerboard, leaving the uh, uh, Granada headstock there, okay? So this is why this is called the 49 Classic. It's got Earl Scruggs' name on it. This particular banjo is in extraordinary condition. In fact, let me see. Uh, I always look at the frets. There's virtually no fret wear. I mean, there's a few little marks on the second fret, but nowhere else. And incidentally, if you ever want to know if a banjo's been played, just look at the second fret, because they do that for Foggy Mountain, and they play Cripple Creek. So those are the two frets that get, uh, or that is the fret that gets worn the most. Okay, so as we turn it over, we look at the resonator, and uh, once again, they haven't made any uh, Gibson banjos since uh, 2010, and uh, this is 96, which is getting real close to the Greg Rich era, and uh, really, really strong banjo. Um, 
So I know a lot of you guys retired that you want a uh, Gibson banjo and uh, you normally would just go down to the store and buy a brand new one, but they don't make any brand new ones. So the next best thing, or actually a better thing, is you buy a banjo like this that's got some playing on it, it's got some age on it, sounds better, and then you find one that whoever owned it really never played it, and bingo, you've kind of got the best thing that you can imagine. So, if incidentally, uh, if you want to see some more pictures of this banjo, just go to banjo hangout.com. Banjo Warehouse. Oh, uh -huh. I'm sorry, it's not banjo. What has gone wrong with me? I've got to go. Anyway, so it's banjowarehouse.com. You can also call, anyway, we've got to have some fun here. Incidentally, this is about 10% of what we have in, in the uh, Banjo Warehouse. So uh, Banjo Warehouse for pictures, and you can also uh, call Andy, that was the uh, voice in the background, my conscience, and call him at 404-372-5482. We do have a, a lot of fun here. So if you uh, want to have fun, just come and visit us. Uh, plan on staying about four hours because uh, with all the different kinds of banjos, it usually takes that long for them to warm up for you to play all the different ones. You'll be able to, you know, compare Gibson to Stelling. You'll be able to possibly uh, see some Yates banjos. We've got some of those in here. They're all used, so you don't really have to worry about, oh, you can't touch that one unless you're going to buy it. No, you can just. Feel free, have a good old time. Do call us the day before if you decide to come because sometimes we're out looking for banjos. But if you need to come Saturday or Sunday, that's fine. We'll be glad to, uh, to see you. So have a great day and uh, we'll look forward to seeing you and answering any questions that you might have.